Welcome to season two of the Rave Esports Show with your host, Bubba Gatter. Thank you guys so much for season one. It was amazing. Because we wanted to give people a place to go to start, right? We just want to see the space grow. We want to be part of shaping that. And we invite brands to come along. I see him. 116. You got yeah. him. Get you him, get him. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. There we go. Now, here's okay. what we're talking about capability. We can now pull in computer number one, and then we also have an inset of camera number one going up onto that screen for what we would look for for that esports experience. How do you introduce yourself in an impactful mm -hmm. way? How do you create a conversation where you're going to get out of it what you're hoping to instead of just introducing yourself for 45 minutes? We're at a crossroads in education. We see it all over. COVID pushed it. Kids today are awesome. UNC Greensboro had come to us. You know, they wanted to bring esports into the space so the goals and the objects of this particular space focus on community focus on academics and curriculum and then how do they bring a good competition space all right bubba here at the infocom esports 2.0 stage in las vegas and season two is coming to you now i'm here with a living legend the neutric guy mark how are you sir very well bubba good to see you thank you very much so we're here at your booth at infocom I want to talk a little bit about applications for esports when it comes to what you guys do. Neutrik is not necessarily an, an expert on esports itself, right? But what we are an expert on is connectivity. We understand how important it is where the difference between winning and losing, right, could be that millisecond or microsecond or the bandwidth properly being able to be maintained throughout the entire event. And so Neutrik's range of products, whether that be a, a connector or an entire assembly, make sure that the connection always stays in place, whether that's uh, using a ruggedized solution that's maybe IP65 rated or more importantly, locking, or maybe in scenarios where we don't necessarily want to interface directly with the expensive electronics that are being used in that competition, but we still need to make sure that each group of players, whether that's 5v5 or one-on-one, -on -one, whatever that is, that they make sure that when they connect into the system that it's going to work and it's not going to have any kind of reliability issue. All right, I'm here with Josh Kale, Horizon AVL, also eSports Integration. How are you, sir? Good, Bubba. How are you? I'm great, man. Tell me about eSports Integration and why you're here at Infocom. eSports Integration, we're a full-service AV integration firm. Our parent company is Horizon AVL. We've been building venues, technology, AV venues for higher education, K-12, in the Horizon world. But then eSports Integration specifically focuses on building eSports programs for our K-12 and higher education clients through the lens of industry standards, practices, and curriculum. What could you do in tandem or with any of these organizations who do AV stuff here at Infocom? It's really understanding the entire gate ecosystem, right? And asking the questions that a lot of AV integrators don't ask when it comes to gaming, just because the understanding of how gaming works and functions, right? So as we're going through with a lot of these manufacturers, we're asking those really hard questions. What What is your refresh rate? Where's the latency? What is the connection points? Um, and, and so how does that work and how does that integrate? Yes, traditional AV, but really how does this fit into the gamer mold and what are the nuances and differences and so it's it's a lot of great conversation with these manufacturers and it's really eye-opening even for them check out esports integration this is josh kell you definitely want him working with you in any of the college or private or public spaces i'm here with the founder of rave rave pubs rave agency the one and only gary k how are you sir <laughs> i'm doing great we're I'll tell you, I'm, I'm uh, ecstatic about the work that you've done with us and how you've Thank helped you. us get into understanding esports better and also help um, drive content into the market about esports so that our integrators can get interested in it. Well, I I look around at this amazing facility and all these booths. I mean, there's two or three large spaces. Yeah. And there are so many organizations and, and corporations that, that I see in the esports space. Uh, from down to the smallest thing to the biggest thing. And it's fun to talk to these AV experts and them to kind of see and realize the value and the benefit of esports from the K-12 to collegiate to the pro space. With regard to esports, I'm really interested in our integrators, our customers and the readers, I should say, are, should be interested in esports because, you know, if you look at an esports uh, event venue, now this is sort of an artificial you know, ad hoc venue, mm -hmm. but they built an esports 2.0 venue here Very on the nice. stage. It, it's multiple AV systems in one, yeah. right? Because you have 
the real time content with zero delay that has mm -hmm. to go back and forth to the players. Right. Then you have the audience where you intentionally insert delay. So we can use H.264, 265 for that um, as a technology mm -hmm. because we don't want the, them tipping off the, the players right, when they exactly. see something, right? But then we have Twitch and mm -hmm. YouTube we're going to. Mm -hmm. But then we also have the, the broadcast. We could be going out to ESPN or something, yep. which is SMPTE 2110 technology, mm -hmm. IPMX. I'm agreeing um, with all these terms and, like I know them. Yeah, well, I'm just not, yeah, see, I'm a tech geek, right? And then the other thing is we, we also want to record it because just like a professional football team, the coaches of these esports teams review the footage. Yep. And so the way we record right. that, we have to record point of view recording, we have to record gameplay mm -hmm. recording, mm -hmm. and we have to mm -hmm. record audience uh, reaction yeah. recording. It's a pretty awesome system. Like yeah. I, can't, I can't think of another application that incorporates so many different types of AV technology. We haven't even talked about the displays. True. That's very true. And to look around and see what is provided, these students that are playing, there's six teams that are playing uh, this week from GCU to Faulkner to um, UNLV, Talladega. Talladega. Yeah. And there's a few more um, that are out here playing and they've come and, and this is home to them yeah. and they feel welcomed, which it's, it's great because that's one big thing running esports events is definitely applying that welcoming attitude. And I think that's been great about Infocom and what you guys have been doing as well. Gary Kate, thank you so much for yeah, taking no. the time, sir. I really appreciate yeah, it. I Thanks appreciate for bringing it. me out to this amazing space. Yeah, and, and by the way, uh, Bubba Getter, you should Google him, connect with him on, uh, on, on, on LinkedIn if you're not already, because this, this dude's doing some really cool stuff. And if you have a kid who loves playing video games, don't tell him to stop playing video games and study. Tell him to play more video games, because you know, the, the, the hand-eye coordination, the multitasking, and the future of esports is financially pretty awesome. Yeah. So uh, listen to what Bubba has to say, and we're honored yes. to have you, Bubba. Eat. Uh, thank you for uh, being Appreciate part it. of uh, the Rave team. Appreciate it. Eat healthy and touch grass as well. <laughs> All right, I'm here with the man, the myth, the legend, Doc Haskell from Boise State. Now, I didn't know you were as big of an AV nerd. And what's going on here at the Esports 2.0 booth? This event is like, for AV nerds, the coolest thing, because everybody's trying to impress each other. Everybody's coming up with a new way to do a, an old idea, and everybody wants to learn what technique they use. See if they can figure out the trick. What What's over there that you really like, like and want to maybe see in your facility, or is, is it well, are you just better? So, so we're almost all software switched through vMix, but when you go over there and you see that massive TriCaster board and, uh, and set up, you're like, that's pretty awesome. Um, I was asking them, believe it or not, about their um, about their event comms, their clear comms system, um, because we typically use Discord right. because it's already a game thing, but we want you know those types of systems. Um, I'm not even kidding. Just in staging. I got completely excited by these wraps because I, I think I've seen them before, but I'd never really know. I'm like, we need to get those. Um, do you know how many um, moving head uh, lights they have in here? 24 is the answer. Um, I know because I'm paying attention to them and how they, they go with the lighting design. So there, there's just so much that they've done to elevate this event, these really nice LED fixture pieces in the back, the, the screen in the back. Uh, the multiple monitors running both um, the the actual match um, and uh, a constant event card, right? That uh, the, basically that um, that graphic A uh, that they're running. So that's it, less the tech, because um, I think you could do the tech with a lot of different things. More the design of the tech to tell the story. And people don't think of a graphics A card as that advanced, because maybe it's just uh, you know PowerPoint or something right. like that. But it's the, our people are gonna walk by and they're gonna wanna know who that is or, or who's talking or what the topic is. That's a big decision to be made to hang monitors, to run, you know, to create uh, the, the graphics bed and, and all everything associated with it to make sure that the story is clear when somebody walks by. That's the stuff that I like write down in my notebook. That was clever, you know, super smart because all those decisions, um, lead to a better show. Thanks so much for watching the Rave Esports Show with me, your host, Bubba Gattert. Uh, check out the Video Games and Esports Foundation. Uh, we would love your donation. The link will be in the description of the video. We'd appreciate your support in supporting disenfranchised students in low-income areas, helping them with STEM education, STEM curriculum, and providing opportunities for gaming and esports through STEM. So thank you guys so much for coming. We're out, peace.
Thank you guys so much for watching the Rave Esports Show. That's right, we are season two. There's a guy about to walk in front of us, and I'm gonna floss. Bloopers. Yeah. Hi, this is Kevin Diltz here at the Extron Experience Center and the eSports booth. Um, we're showcasing some of the great projects that we've done for different colleges and universities and high schools. And what the experience and the end result about is really what we're most focused on for both the players, the students, and the audience as well. So we're looking here at an example of a recent project that we worked with uh, Army West Point Esports and their facility turned out really amazing and the feedback from the director, from the program, from the cadets who are competing in esports has just been overwhelmingly positive about what our AB technology has done for their space. So no matter if you're at the level of Army West Point or a four-year university, a community college, or even a middle school or high school, we can design an eSports system that makes the most sense for your specific school, and we look forward to working with you. So please contact us at extron.com, search for eSports, and you'll be at our eSports homepage.